Welcome back, fellow scrubs. And hey, didn't uh, a Barry? A Barry? How do I say that now? Thank you for that follow. I saw that in the I saw that in the countdown there. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So we're back. It's Monday. We got Pocket Fighter EX, which is not uh, officially licensed or anything by Capcom or SNK. It's just a fan game, community based. And with that out of the way, let's take a look. So we're gonna do something a little exciting. <laughs> and we're gonna experiment with a new gameplay feature, or at least I think that it fits the mold of the game. So we're gonna, I'll show you what I've got and uh, we'll talk about why I decided to experiment with these and add these when originally I wasn't so sure about it. Mr. Din, Mr. Dean, Dean, if it helps. Okay, fair enough, Mr. Dean. <laughs> So, yes, Alpha Counters. If you uh, are an old Street Fighter fan, you'll know what that is. It's basically where from a defensive position, such as blocking an attack, you can um, you can cause an attack to occur. And depending on the game, it works a little different. Um, reuse a bad example here, because he's just going to do to show you. So we're going to want... I'll pick my green... We're gonna want Terry. Terry's programmed to just throw out a heavy kick. <clears throat> also, the reason I'm a little late today, I know this always happens, always something goes wrong. Windows just decided to update at the very last second. I was about to hit the go live and it just kind of killed everything. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, no, I, I recognize you. Um, we talked on Twitter or something a while back. Um, oh shoot, hold on. So there's the other one. You've got two alpha counters programmed right now. Well, three, there's three things you can do. Three things you can do. You can do the push block that's already in the game, that's already in the demo that's out there. So you most likely know all about that. It's a way to just get the, the other character off of you and, and do something you know, after that, just kind of oh, get a little breathing space. Now, there's a couple reasons, actually, that um, it's not... It, not on, its, on its own, I felt like wasn't enough to add to it, and I'll show you exactly why here. And this is fine. There, there's no reason that this part has to change. So, Ken's programmed to wake up with a Hadouken, right? Well... What happens when you push block a Hadoken is, oh, if I can get over here, basically nothing. You're pushing the Hadoken, you're not pushing Ken. So it ends up that basically nothing happens. You might get some advantage, sometimes you might not, depending on how far the thing is. And in there, Ken, who threw the Hadoken, recovered much quicker um, than I did by trying to push block it. Um, there is potentially some merit in multi-hitting projectiles. If you push block the first projectile, or the first hit of the projectile, the second one will not inflict any chip damage because it puts you into armor max mode, which reduces or nullifies chip damage, you know, increases your defense, that kind of stuff. So, it works great for melee stuff, sure. Gets them off of you. But what if you could just attack out of that situation instead to give you more options on what you can do? And I probably should have stayed on Ken here for a second. Do the extended arms not have a hurt box of their own in any game prior to the Hadoken coming out? Not have... Do the extended arms not have a hurt box of their own in any games? I, you mean like in the official games? I'm not sure. Yeah, no, I know the Hadoken pose. I know what you mean. Um, I, are you asking like the official Street Fighter games if they have a hurt box? I'm pretty sure they do. I gave them one just because I think it needs one. So anyway, here... Um, when you have an alpha count, you can actually do something about this situation now. 
instead of push blocking, use the alpha counter. Oh. And then you can actually inflict some damage. Like, if you landed on it, but missed the projectile... Oh, 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 okay. Um, do you mean, do the hands of the Hadoken actually inflict any damage? Well, he throws his hands out, regardless if a, if a Hadoken comes out. Okay, okay, so you said hurt box. Typically, that a hurt box is considered a, a vulnerable part, and then the hit box is what inflicts the damage. Um, so that, that was my confusion there. Um, no, those do not inflict any damage on their own. I think the only... Yeah, you know what? And you can confirm that because Alpha 1 or Alpha 2, Ryu has a fake Hadoken where he throws his arms out, but nothing comes out. It's like a fake out move. But that doesn't actually do any damage if it, if it connects. So no, I do not believe that in any game the hands actually cause any damage to occur. I think it's only if a Hadoken leaves them. So yeah, in this in this scenario, you you could with an alpha counter be able to do something about that. And that was one of the things that had been bugging me about the push block, is that it was pretty useless on projectile. So if you gave him, you know, the ability to punish something like that, uh, why not? Why not try to fill that gap? So I think that might work. <laughs> Ken's kick Hadoukens. I I don't know. <laughs> See, the thing is, is is how how can you really test that? Can you really like other than like viewing the hitboxes, right? Which maybe somebody has recorded the hitboxes, but I man, I don't know. That's that's an interesting question. <laughs> I don't know about the kick tokens. <laughs> And so anybody who's wondering, in Street Fighter 4's Omega mode, Ken got Hadoukens, but they were they were based on his legs. They were experimenting with different things on that. So um, that's that's what Tim's referring to. That's an interesting idea. I, I mean, theoretically, you would expect that that would be the case, but I really don't know. <coughs> I don't think 4 has any mechanic that would allow you to really even test that. So one question the more competitive players might be asking is... Can you KO with an alpha counter? Yes. <laughs> Oh, the, the question was whether or not the hands on the Hadoken actually inflict damage or not, re, re, despite not, you know, whether or not the Hadoken itself hits. And uh, the answer is no, it doesn't. But the follow-up question was, well, in Street Fighter 4, what about Ken's kicking Hadoken move? Does that actually count as both a projectile and a melee? Or is there, there a hurt, or is there a hitbox on the leg itself? And I don't, I wouldn't expect there to be. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I'm not sure how I could even test it. Because you would have to miss the Hadoken part of it somehow, or nullify the Hadoken and then get hit by the leg. And I'm not even sure how that, how you would test that in Street Fighter 4. Oh, we got um, we got two more followers. I'm sorry. I don't hear the jingle right now. I need. I have to order a new set of speakers. So, um, we've got Rorta and the Ghost Godzilla. Ghost Godzilla? <laughs> Thank you guys for the follows. It looks like you guys came in within the same minute, too. That's funny. Um, so yeah, that was, that was the reason that I decided to experiment with the alpha counters here. Now there is, there's a couple things to note. There's, there's a few caveats here, um, and we'll go over all of it. Um, but that, that was the initial spark. I just didn't like the fact that you couldn't do anything about the projectiles. And you could say that, okay, the projectiles are a way to sort of fake someone out into a push block and then maybe punish it or something like that. But now you have all of them. You've got the push block, and you've got two, count them two, 
alpha counters. So why are there two and what's the difference? So we got our input view here. First, I should explain how do you do the alpha counters? Well, doing the push block is just hitting your max activation, which is heavy punch, heavy kick, uh, while blocking, simple enough. If you want an alpha counter, what you have to do is you have to then input forward and a punch or a kick. And depending on what you got, um, you'll get two different moves. So if you do forward and a punch, oh, I did it too early. You get the uh, Shoryuken, if you do forward and a kick, you get that kick. So right now they're just programmed to use those specific moves as is. There's no special properties to them. However, there probably will have to be. So this is sort of a prototype feature. It's not completed. Um, you'll notice that if you're familiar with alpha counters that at least in this regard, like say with alpha two, I think most, most if not all the alpha counters will knock them down them like into a spin state or whatever that is not currently happening but that's also just because it's calling the actual normal shoryuken and the normal kick they're not animated special at this uh yeah it's any punch or kick button mm. so yeah if i can do it here i did it with light you say i ended up with light kick activated it or heavy kick will do it as well so it's up to you what, what's most comfortable, but it's just after the activation of holding back and that and the heavies, then you have to press forward and one of the kicks. Oh, that's all. And it can be down forward or forward or probably even up forward. Let's see. Can I do an up? Yeah, it worked with an up. Uh, so as long as it's just forward, holding any forward and a punch or a kick button. And you, you can buffer it in too. You don't have to like hold it through the whole thing. You can just do that and away it goes. Oh, I didn't hit the button. <laughs> Let's see. I did it all way, in a, way ahead of time. And it came out. So that, that was one of the things that I wanted to make sure that it was smooth. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Oh, chat's going a mile a minute here. Uh, kind of reminds me of Break Shots from Real Bout Fatal Fury Special. Haven't really played that, so I'm not sure uh, how that works exactly. Let's see. So, same command as a special move at the cost of half a bar. I wondered about that, letting you just do a special move out of it, but I felt that this was a, a an easier way to input it. Let's see. Uh, oh, the stage looks amazing. Well, thank you. Actually, uh, Raito did most of the work for that. Um, so this is kind of like a uh, creation. Of, oh, crap. And chat died. <laughs> <laughs> one, but one drawback of uh, X input controllers. If you if you look at the um, if you if you focus onto a web browsing page, the controller will start controlling the web page. So I just lost the chat. I'm sorry. If you just said something, uh, type it again and I'll and I'll read it. Um, hey, Asian Pikachu, what's up? So yeah, Raito did most of the work on this stage. It's actually a conversion, a heavy conversion of Terry's other stage, which we have. Um, we've got two versions of the stage. The one, yeah. So the, the original version of the stage, this actually comes from Match of the Millennium. Uh, we changed a couple things to make it, you know, like more wide and whatever. But this is pretty much mostly Match of the Millennium stuff. And then so we got to talking about wouldn't it be really cool if we had an alternate version of the stage that was like a different time of day or whatever. And that kind of snowballed into... Uh, let's try to take that stage and give it the Garo Mark of the Wolves style background where he's on the ocean and it's got the uh, the trees and the, the fence going by and, and that. So you'll see also, you can see the train car engines 
or just the cars or whatever on the on the two sides and it's got some of the barrels and stuff so we're planning on, on working more of those elements back into the first stage too um, but this was the the one that was more advanced at the at the time yeah I thought so I, I, I like the idea of having a uh, stage alternate stage uh, designs here and this was like this was of course a lot of work to to get all the extra elements in here but I think ultimately um, you know it wasn't as much work as a full stage so it was a good compromise between just changing the palette or actually adding stuff to it because man I always love Terry's Garo stage is really cool so violent Ken please <laughs> maybe well th uh, see here's the thing I want to I want to focus on um, other characters instead of like different versions of characters at least for a while you know what I mean so if we start adding like three Ryu's and ten Ken's and all that shit people will be like uh okay that's cool but how about like <laughs> you know what I mean so uh yeah maybe eventually How's Iori's development? Pretty much stalled while I'm getting the GGPO stuff. Um, we're still trying to develop some uh, deterministic components for Unity and also trying to figure out and make a decision on whether or not we want to try to support alternate costumes. And if we can make that work, um, it's probably going to lead to me having to reanimate all the characters in the game uh, at this point in the research. So I'm reluctant to start animating Iori to only just have to reanimate him again. <laughs> Is it weird that I prefer Ken's Alpha 2 voice instead? Hey, you want to know what the wackest um, Ken voice is? Check out uh, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact. Oh man, the voices are really weird in that game. Really, really, really weird. Very, very strange. Very, very, very strange. It's quite a, it's quite a, quite a thing. Michael Jackson, Alex, yeah. Did, did New Generation have the same voices? I thought Second Impact had the especially weird ones. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe, maybe they're both weird. I, I thought it was Second Impact that had, specifically, that had the really weird voices. Wait, so Ryu's voice was by Okuyasu's voice. That's JoJo, right? Part two? Or uh, part two, part four, right? And then uh, Josuke's buddy there, which is also Daffy Duck's Japanese voice actor. <laughs> yeah, yep, okay. JoJo part four, okay. Some of the, some of the more exotic names I, I get mixed up, so I did remember that one. That's good. Just add more Gokus. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just add five versions of Goku, that's fine. Wataru Takagi is the voice actor's name. Huh. Well, there you go, you learn something new every day, huh? <laughs> Imagine Ryu doing the Daffy Duck laugh. <laughs> How much more Gokus do you need? Yeah, for real. Um, I'll show a couple other stages too. Um, I, if you know anything about me, I love trains. So there's a lot of train stages. <laughs> we got three train stages. This is one of my favorite alpha, alpha one and two stages. Um, so we added that. I added the snow. It doesn't normally have snow on it. Um, but I wanted to do that. I think ultimately what I'll end up doing is making... Um, tra stage transitions so like the first round is gonna be snowy maybe and then the snow lets up or maybe it doesn't start with any snow and then the snow starts coming down in the second or third round oh no we got a bot in chat somebody kill it damn the bot I don't need your your follows bot I don't need to buy follows are you kidding me <laughs> I think one of the mods is here. 
I see him. Take him out, mod. Take him out. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, yeah, the snow is a really nice touch. It came out very well, I thought. I <laughs> suffer and suck attach. <laughs> I don't know. You're not a mod, Tim, are you? You should be, though. I'll have to mod you later. Or can I Can I just slash mod in your name? Let's see. Slash mod. Hey, there you go. You're mod now. <laughs> Take him out. <laughs> slash mod in the username. That's all it is. Yeah, we don't need too many mods right now. We don't have, we don't have that big of a infestation. Yeah, if you can't even get an emote right, how are you supposed to get a, get mod powers? How can I trust you? <laughs> yeah, get him, Tim. Kill him! Get him! <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah. So there are two. There are two alpha counters now. Alpha two. I don't know about alpha one, but alpha two had two of them. I think Alpha 3 um, got rid of the two and only gave you one. Wait a minute, what do I want? Take out the... Take out the bot! Oh, did you? Did you already? I don't see it anymore. I think it's gone. Or, or chat just scrolled him out of existence. Yeah, I think you got him. Like, like removing the, actually like removing the, the message in chat. Oh yeah, yeah, one message was deleted by moderator. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. The original mod got him. <laughs> You're too, too slow. <laughs> That's fine. Now we've got two. Um, yeah. So the, the question was whether I wanted to also include two and, um, there is... There's a good reason to include two, I think. And I'll actually switch the opponent to Ryu to exemplify why. Especially since, um... Since I said before that, uh, hey, you know, Ryu's... Ryu's not a good example for this. Well, he's all, he, he, he isn't in general to show the thing, but... Oh, shit, hold on. Okay, see that? What if that was Ken's only alpha counter? Well, now I've I can do other things though too, right? So if I have if I have two, ah, <laughs> I'm missing it. I'm missing it. If I have two, well now I can do things in different situations depending on what the opponent did. So you see what I mean? That's why I think it, it's probably a good idea to have two. Obviously, I haven't made a final determination, but I think it. I think there's a good case for this, especially since Pocket Fighter EX is a bit more frantic than the typical Street Fighter. Uh, you want to have two different ways of handling the situation, just in case. It's possible you could add you could add unique moves to Alpha Counters. Absolutely. Um, because I can just make whatever animation I want. Hell, I, I'm not saying I will do this, but I could make it a super if I wanted to, just programming-wise. Uh, it just it just takes a move file. So if I go in here, just just to be cheeky for a minute, just to see what what it would do. Uh, here it is. So we'll make the punch one. Show you Rapa. Where is it? Show you. Show you Rapa. So just for shits and giggles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just for shits and giggles. Yeah, I, I can program it to anything that I want. So it could be something unique, for sure. Of course, I guess that's not very, uh, not very useful there. Maybe here. There you go. <laughs> okay, we'll revert that, but you get the idea. <laughs> So yeah, so there, there comes 
to the to the point of where yeah you could you say make a, a shoryuken that has a special property to it it's really a different animation although it looks like the shoryuken so there's a lot of stuff shinryuken alpha counter oh my god could you fucking imagine can you imagine but yeah okay so yeah naturally the discussion is going to to v skills and v reversals and stuff um, yeah, so the Alpha Counter and the V Reversal in Street Fighter V are very similar. It's a, it's a similar type of concept. Although the, the Alpha Counters are typically stronger than the V Reversals in Street Fighter V. Where those Street Fighter V V Reversals cannot KO, for one. And they also don't seem to do that much damage. And I think their damage is recoverable. Uh, in addition to... They just, they're not... I think they're a little easier to punish in Street Fighter 5 like across the board where in Street Fighter 2 or Street Fighter Alpha 2 or any of the alphas I think they were just a bit harder to like really bait and punish <clears throat> uh let's see let's see more shits and giggles let's see we said Shin Ryuken right <laughs> Shin Shin you can, right? Yeah, here. Shinryu can. I'm give him the heavy version just for the absurdity of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, get fucked! <laughs> can you imagine that? That's so cheap. So, um, but that does, uh, lead me to the next thing. If it's just using normal moves or whatever, um, can, can the characters, like, combo out of it and stuff? Um... Technically, they could have, but I had to put a stop to that uh, because otherwise, and I'll just refresh it here to get them back to normal. You could actually have buffered a super um, from here. You could actually have buffered a super into that um, if I didn't if I didn't stop it from happening. So no, uh, you cannot combo off of it. It's not meant to be. Like, uh, an instant reversal, take half your life kind of thing. <laughs> thanks! Yeah, we try to spice them up a bit. A lot, a lot of the levels come from the Neo Geo Pocket games. But we add, we add a whole bunch of stuff. So we got, like, the lens flare here, and... And all the parallax, and... Nope, no, that's not gonna work. Yeah, I was gonna say, what other match of the morning ones we got here? Oh, yeah, this one, jeez. The Neo Geo World from Gal Fighters. This one, we worked a lot on this one. We did a lot of work on this one. There's Tim's searchlights. Every time I show up, he's like, hey, there's my searchlights. <laughs> Tim animated the searchlights. So we animated the Ferris wheel a little bit. Um... <clears throat> So there's other little touches in this one that the other stages haven't received yet. So if you notice, I'm going to turn off the input view here. This light here, whenever there's a knockdown, it flickers. And it will eventually break too. It has a random amount of knockdowns before it breaks. I think it's like 20 and they, they stack or they, they, they stay between rounds. So since it's a 3v3, you probably won't see it in the first round, but eventually it'll break. And on the other end... Oh, we got a... I don't know if you can see it. We got a... Somebody followed on... Oh, there it is. You see the vending machine and the, uh, the soda can popped out of the vending machine. So we got a follow on um, ga er, uh, Game Jolt. Thank you. I like that. That 
you can install the game jolt client and I can see all the notifications for people following on there. Um, but yeah, so over here, knockdowns near the vending machine will sometimes cause a soda can to pop out in, in, in addition to the flickering on the vending machine. There's one. There's one. It popped out. So there's lots of little stuff we want to add like that. Oh. Eh. So there's um there's a lot of nuances in the way the alpha counters work. So I'm gonna pause this here and we're actually gonna bring up alpha two. Playing games. We've got Street Fighter 30th. So, what better than to examine the source material? Oh, that's right. Yeah, you made the four in the vending machine, Raito. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all we all pitched in for that. Uh, the bench actually comes from Mighty Final Fight. If you, anybody noticed that, I, I think I changed it a little bit. I took the bench and the and the trash can for Mighty Final Fight, <laughs> which is a really good game, by the way. If you haven't played it, it's the the regular Nintendo port of Final Fight. It's pretty much a, a different game, to be honest, but it's really good. And offline. Oh no, we can't do training on Alpha Two, can we? Oh no. Uh oh. Um. Interesting. Well, I guess we'll have to do Alpha Two Arcade. So, oh, load game save. Game. Oh, you can do save states. I didn't know that. Right. Uh, I guess we'll, guess we'll pick Ryu. Shit, you need that meter too, right? Oh, this is going to be a pain in the ass. I did say save game, load game. So let's get some meter and then try to save state it, I guess. I don't know. Oh. Come on, dumb AI. Okay, we got meter, so um, save game. So if we do something, blah, 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 let's load game. Oh yeah, okay, good, okay, good. So I think this one, come on, oh shit, this is gonna be forever till he actually attacks me. You have to block? Oh yeah, yeah, let him come to me. You have to block? And then you like hold there there it is that's the alpha counter but see how it like spins them up so let's let's load again thank god they got save saves holy crap um nope <laughs> come on come on jeez you gotta do a like a reverse quarter circle and then would there it is so he's got those two he's got the punch he's got the shoryuken and he's got the trip and i don't know if alpha one has god i can't believe they didn't add training and online to alpha two fuck me alpha two such a good game <laughs> i'm still mad about that oh well i guess there's always fight Cade, right um so those are his two, and I think that they, they're very good for that reason. Like, if someone jumps in on you and you try to do the sweep, it probably won't hit. Or there might be they might be in a move that's going upward, and, and therefore, so if Ryu only had the sweep cal alpha counter, then how would he reasonably punish half the moves? So I think having two like that is very important, and we're going to go to alpha three here quick, which I've heard that alpha three only has... Um, heard that Alpha 3 only has one Alpha counter per character, and I think it's pressing both mediums while blocking, but we'll see. We'll see how this works. It's been a long time since I've actually played Alpha 3. <laughs> at least there's a, there's a training mode in here. 
Oh, and it also takes your guard gauge in this game, which is actually pretty smart instead of your super meter. Um, let's see. So question in chat. How do you feel about the color palettes used for the stages? Are those the exact same as the Neo Geo Pocket Color games? Yes, actually they are, for the most part. Um, the new elements, we might have to uh, insert some new colors, but I do like to try to keep the same... Oh, I got it on slow-mo. <laughs> I got it on slow. That'll, that'll help, though. Yeah, we, we do use the Neo Geo Pocket colors. I think for the most part, they're pretty good. The Neo Geo Pocket had a, a pretty good color palette to work with, and, and they, they made very smart color selections to the game. So when I do my coloring of the characters, I try to fit it so that it sort of matches that color palette. Mm. No, not particularly. I, I think the slightly washed out colors give it a, a very decidedly retro look. So I don't particularly have any uh, ambition to change the palette or make them any richer. I think they look pretty interesting the way that they are. That's just me at least. Uh, let's see, we want to put Ken in record. So, let's try that. Um, oh, uh, sorry. Whoa, oh, here we go. Here we go. I don't know what the command is for this. Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, let's try again. There it is. Yeah, it's, I think it's... Is it just the mediums? Hold on. Let's try that again. I don't think it's just the mediums. I think you have to do the mediums and forward. Yeah, you have to do the mediums and forward. Or, or uh, maybe the lights work too. I think it's just two of any button. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's any two strength buttons. So the two lights, two mediums, or two heavies and forward. But because of that, there's only one. So in this case, they chose Ryu, Shoryuken, which is fine. Um, I think the the obvious flaw here. Um, oh, come on, do you think? The obvious flaw here is if you do something that's like really long range, you won't be able to do anything about it. Um, so let me change. I'm going to try to record Ken to do a hot open instead. And then we'll see. Let's see. For one, to see if I can even alpha counter the hot open. Maybe not. Oh, you can. So here's the deal. This is why having two is important, I think. Look at that. Well, how am I supposed to counter that? Only if you're really close, right? So, yeah, the Shoryuken is kind of long-reaching in this one. But if I had the heavy kick while he's shooting his Hadouken out, I would be able to, I'd be able to stop that. See? I would be able to counter it. We're standing here. Otherwise, you can't get it. So if I had also the kick one, I'd be able to counter that. that. That's what leads me to believe that having two of the alpha counters makes sense in the game. And and one could be stronger than the other, for sure. You could have them have different utilities. Say their better one is the short range one, but you can only do so much with it. And then the worst of the two, say, is the crouching heavy kick, which maybe it doesn't do as much damage, but it's longer reaching. So you can hit grounded opponents from farther away. And, and maybe that's what you need in that situation. I think that having that sort of diversity of moves and that sort of nuance to them could be very helpful for the game. Uh, oh, we got a... I'm sorry. I got We got a follow. I'm trying to keep track of it here on the on the right. So, uh, Vinla, Vinlage? Vinlage? Vinlage, I guess. I know I'm saying that wrong. Thank you for that follow. Sorry I didn't catch it earlier. My uh, speaker's out, so I don't I don't hear it anymore. But uh, I got one coming in from Amazon. Big, little, little cheap ten dollar speaker. <laughs> It'll hook it right up. Uh, let's see. So Alpha One, I'm going to guess that Alpha One 
has, uh, and again, there's no shit, no training mode for Alpha One. Well, let's go to arcade. I'm assuming Alpha One's probably going to be the same as Alpha Two, but I don't know. Guess we'll see. See what we get. <clears throat> They just throw you right in. Oh, it's Adon again. Oh. Right. Build some meter. I think I only need one bar. Yeah. Bonk. Okay. Now let's save game. And get him. Wow, you you don't regain control for like a little bit there, do you? Okay, let's try this again. Uh, oh, no. Yep, it's the same as Alpha 2 there. Let's see, can I do one with kicks? Oh, I wasted my meter. Um, so, load game? Yeah. Well, let's try it again. Back up. Uh, I can't seem to do one. Uh, come on. Or is it just forward? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to. I did it once. And I couldn't seem to do it again anyway. Okay, I did it with the punch again. Can you not do it to supers? I'm assuming my timing is just wrong, but okay. Try it one more. I can't, I can't seem to do it with a kick, so there might only be one in this game. Yeah. Seems a little more fickle in this. I, I feel like I had better luck with Alpha 2. I don't know. I can't seem to get a kick one to work, so maybe there's only one in this game. But I think Alpha 2 is the prime example in this case. Um, I think that's the one that that I would like to model this off of. So going back to that, I wonder if it still saved my save state. That'd be cool. Load game. Oh yeah, it did. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, <laughs> see, yeah, alpha counters aren't invincible. You can you can bait them and do stuff like that, where there's situations that are just too far away to hit. Um, let's load game again. I want him to get closer. Come on. Maybe I don't know the exact motion. I thought I used to know it. What? I think it's a reverse half circle, so it's it's a back to down. And then, yeah, there. Now see what happened. How far he flew back. Like, he went flying. So this is, this is a part where I would want to potentially change this. And the reason is... We'll close this for now. I think we've got the example down. Here's the reason. We have a push block that pushes them far back, right? Oh. So when we do the attacks, they don't have to push them far back. Because we have an option that pushes them far back. And that's the push block. It does no damage, but it pushes them far black. Meh, black. Far back. So shirt certainly the Shoryu can push can push them back. 
But in this case, like it doesn't push them back that much to do that. Now I might add advantage to that move to make it a little more, um, a little better to use since it doesn't do a lot of damage. But you can, you, hopefully you can see what I mean. Oh, let's see. Uh, let's do it. Oh. Wow, man, that hit from far away too, didn't it? Yeah. Wow, you could you could really really hit that far away. So let's let's put Ken back up here. Man, you could you could punish fireballs pretty good that way. But I think adding more advantage to that would be useful. So then it doesn't make the it doesn't make the push block useless because the push block doesn't do damage again. So you have to figure out a way to make all of them viable in some form. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, you can hit them from pretty far away. Oh, almost. Ugh, trying to trying to do it like all in one smooth movement but it, it's it's hard to it's hard to just train myself to do something like that there we go but it's it's a little far but yeah he can Ken can punish farther than the other characters right now of course he's the only one that's currently programmed for it we'll we'll add one to Ryu to exemplify in a moment but if he's really close, he can get away with a fire, or a Shoryuken, but not from here. Oh wow, okay, never mind. I guess that was pretty far. But he only got one hit. So there you go, like that. But with the kick? Oh, I'm pretty sure he can get that. Oh, come on. Nope, too far there. But that's the idea, like you get you get what I mean? That you can have them serve different functions. I think the, the range of the Shoryuken is actually pretty good. <laughs> um, I'll probably have to give him his light Shoryu for that. Or uh, or something. To balance that out. Um, but you get the idea. Actually, he should be able to counter if I did that. Let's see. Yeah, because he recovers before he recovers before I hit the ground. So yeah, you would not want to use this to to punish that. You would want to use the kick. Unless you got those extra hits, then you're not gonna you're not gonna have any advantage doing that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because see, he can land, or he can already attack before I land again. Is, yeah, Ken's the only one right now, and that's because I, I changed the way that it works. But we can we can program reuse right now. If we set him up like Alpha 2, right? So we want to go to Ryu. And we'll scroll down to the Alpha Counters. I have to add the command inputs for them for him. That was the one, so C6, uh, light punch, I'm sorry, heavy punch first, C6, light punch, and then C6, heavy kick, and C6, light kick. So what this means, C6 means cardinal direction 6. And so the it's number pad notation. So if you look at the number pad on your keyboard, if you have one, um, 6 is right, seven or 4 is left, 8 is up, 2 is down. And so when I say cardinal 6, that means any right uh, facing direction. So upright, down right, and right, center right are all considered right because obviously like down right is still right it's just down right um so cardinal is i use the the letter c to note cardinal meaning it could be any of those three plus heavy punch or white punch heavy kick or white kick 
Um, that's what that's about. And let me... I have to erase those because they're cached in. And let's try Ryu out. <clears throat> Are there any guidelines set for palette? Or for, any guidelines or set palette for the main characters in comparison to the backgrounds? Might be worthwhile to look up a full Neo Geo color palette for... Oh, yeah, um, I just kind of wing it. I don't, I don't use any selected set palette, I just kind of wing it, and whatever I think looks good, that's what I put in. <laughs> it's it, it's not, not too scientific for that. And not, not so much an accuracy thing, just more of a style thing. Um, yeah, we'll do Ken first here, yeah, as the opponent. Um, oh yeah, so Saka, that's another match in the Millennium Neo Geo stage. So I, I changed the layering and, and the animation a little on this so that you get that kind of scrolling effect, which the Neo Geo Pocket did not have. There's room for improvement here. There's a lot more stuff I think we can do. There's crowds of people and stuff, which I think could be a good host for cameos and things like that. So uh, anyway, so there we go. And then... There we are. So there's, uh, actually that should be Heavy Show you can... Let's change that real quick. Uh... Okay, we can close those. So, the punch counter move. I do Heavy Show you can... I don't know if I need to clear those out again. We'll see. Oh, yep. This is what happens when I don't clear out the hitbox cache. Uh, there is, there's no collision. It gets all goofy. So let me, let me load Ryu up. Yeah, see, this is what happens. Then it makes duplicates and it's all, it's all wacky. So. <clears throat> Early Neo Geo Pocket Color had a ton of colors. Maybe just collect them from whatever we have in the background so far. I do that to a degree. Yeah, if I add new elements, I typically look for something in the palette. Um, for the characters, still more of a wing it situation, but... There. So there now it's heavy, sure you can. Cool. And then he's got, of course, the normal. So there you go. Now it works like Alpha 2. And again, it gives them um, an opportunity to punish from far away. Because if we do this, oh, 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 I didn't get it. See, he's not going to be able to hit it. But like this, he can do it. So that's why, again, that's why I think that it's a good idea to have, oh, missed that. To have multiple. Screwing around on him. Oh. You rolled out of it. Yeah, the Neo Geo Pocket Color had had really good. It had, it had better capabilities than the Game Boy Color. Um, it just didn't catch on. It was a little too late to the party and didn't have. Um... Ooh, get over there. Um. It didn't have the killer lineup. Like, it didn't have the Mario, it didn't have the Zelda, etc. But yeah, Neo Geo Pocket Color was actually a really, for its time, was a good powerhouse machine. And I think the games on it really exemplified that. You didn't see anything like this on Game Boy Color. I mean, obviously not with the layering and all that, but I mean, the, the actual official Neo Geo Pocket games, you didn't see any of that kind of stuff. Not even that same caliber on the Game Boy Color, because it just couldn't do it with the Neo Geo Pocket Color could. We're off. So from that far, you wouldn't get anything. The other thing, um, if you're new here, armor max mode also puts armor on one of your moves. For Ryu, it happens to be his elbow. <clears throat> then you can do shit like that. 
That's Tim's favorite. I put that in for Tim. <laughs> he kept trying to do it when it was impossible, and then he glitched it. Or found a, an exploit to make it possible, and I'm like, screw it, fine, we'll just put it in. <laughs> I think it's cool, though. It's, it's a good combo. Hmm. So. Uh, I have no idea what Terry's alpha counter should be. One of... One of... Yeah, part of me thinks that one of them should be his forward heavy kick. Um, and that would be this move. Would make sense, I think. Because it's far reaching. Um, other than that, I don't know. Maybe this? It does the same thing, though. So it's still a far reaching move. So, I don't know, a trip? Nah, it's the same thing. It's really got the same... That doesn't help. That's actually minus on hit. Um, you're supposed to use it in conjunction with something else. I mean, he could he could just have a DP like the other ones. Oh, Terry's a little glitched right now. That's why you might see shit like this happen. Um, this is a kick, so... I mean, if that's alpha counter punch, this could be alpha counter kick, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if it would be useful or not. Uh, power wave doesn't make sense. Burn knuckle also doesn't make sense. It's a little slow, like really slow. <clears throat> Man, you, you imagine punishing a Hagdow kid from here? <laughs> wow, that'd be, that'd be a little too sick. I don't know. I, he'd probably wouldn't. He'd probably be able to recover in time, though. Cause this is, I don't know. Maybe it's not that fast. I don't know. Definitely not the heavy one. Of course, then you, you're gonna get the situation of being able to punish from halfway across the screen. That's a little much. You know what I mean? It's a little, little much. Did they really use that for break shot? Holy shit! Crack shoot EX. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, you don't want anything that's going to lead to a combo, so EXs won't won't apply. Um, oh, what about dunk? Hmm. Oh, that, oh my God! If it's power dunk, you get a free hard knockdown. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Oh my god. It'd be that'd be so OP having this. Can you fucking imagine? Alright, hold on. Let's get Terry or let's get Ken as the opponent to throw Hado Ken at us. Can you imagine? Yeah, the power dunk sounds pretty good. I, I gotta admit that. Oh, here's another. This, I like the way this stage came out. This was from KOFR2 on the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Um, but I added, like, the reflections that... Because this stage was really in... <clears throat> originally in KOF98. And it had reflections under the characters and stuff. So I added that in. Uh, where the Neo Geo one just didn't happen to. Which makes sense. I didn't have the power to do that. But god, it looks really good. Okay. Oh, shit. I'm supposed to pick him. For the opponent. Supposed to pick Ken, so Terry and Ken. We'll go back to the shiny stage here. Oh my god, this is gonna be ridiculous. Can you imagine how our burn knuckle is an alpha counter? Holy fuck. Alright. Um, oh shoot, you know, hold on. I have to, I have to bake in his settings here first. So, that oh, way I don't have to keep doing this. You can do these edits on the fly, but they don't save unless you do them in the in the stored object. So, let me just put these in quick. Uh, heavy punch, C6, light punch, and then C6, heavy kick. And C6 light kick. Okay. And for starters, we'll do 
just for the absurdity of it. Her knuckle. Uh, we'll do white first. I think it'll be the more useful one. And for the kick, what do we say? Oh yeah, <laughs> power dunk. I can't believe power dunk. This would be crazy. Oh, uh, yeah, exit prefab. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to. Uh, hold on, let's do this thing. I gotta go back in. Number one, let's close these. Okay. Yeah, and then you see how it it cached all the hitboxes and let's get rid of them. Okay, here we go. At least he can't OTG after. Yeah, you're right, because he would he would uh, end up in armor max. So those of you who don't know, uh Power stream can only be used in power max mode, but it can OTG. It's the only move right now. So, um. Oh! <laughs> you, can, you can do that, and there's nothing they can do about it. Um. Do you have enough time? No. Uh, he, he should have blocked that, but he's on set to wake up, so that didn't work. Okay, so, yeah, let's see. Oh, that didn't work. Huh, do we have an error? How come it didn't work? Let's try again. Oh! Yeah, he doesn't have... He's got the wrong command. Oh, sorry. I gotta bring it back here. We have to edit his animation so that the... Uh, the moment where it decides what it needs to do can actually work here. So we go to push block. It's got a lot of P's. Uh, push block, there it is, on the bottom. Okay, one thing I want to get rid of that one flag. This has nothing to do with what we're actually doing right now. But we don't use that flag anymore. So while I'm here, might as well do it. So here... Check push block roll cancel. Yeah, I think this is the one. So I change this to instead to check check armor max. Oh, where did I go buy it now? Check. Max mode activation check. Armor max cancel special action. There. That's it. Okay. It should be all right now. Yep. There we go. <laughs> oh my god. This is going to be ridiculous. You can imagine. Ooh! Oh shit. That looks cool. <laughs> Ooh. So let's see. No. Nah, he, he could have blocked that. So let's set him to all guard. I guess it's, that's not as OP as I figured it would be. Oh. Nah, that's not as OP as I thought it would be. It's kind of cool though. I'll consider it. I'll consider it. Um, and then all oh, the dunk. Oh, can you imagine? Man, that's that's a real ass for like reversal too because that's a hard knockdown. <laughs> Like, like you have really turned the tide at that point. Now they're definitely on the defensive. You figure out what to do. Dunk it. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> You're in for it now. Oh! <laughs> can you imagine? And crack shoot? I, hey, we can try it. And hey, this is the experimentation, right? We can try it. Um, I don't think it'd be as useful as power dunk. See, the the one weakness is the power dunk one. It ha actually has kind of an interesting dynamic already, in that um, you know, you can't do it from long range. It's just gonna miss. So that's really a close range one because you get the most reward out of it, right? So that sort of works. Um, I wouldn't put power charge in, and the only reason I wouldn't 
is because that leads to a combo opportunity by default because power charge is a launcher. It would make sense if it didn't let you follow it up, but if, yeah. But otherwise, I think it makes sense to just do these ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, Burn Knuckles not quite as, um, not quite as crazy as it looks. Like, close up, you can do that, and it kind of gives you a good corner carry. But it's not as, not as crazy. Yeah, crack shoot. Crack shoe. It's not crack shoe. It's crack shoot. I don't know. Maybe he's trying to say shoe. We don't know. Terry's Terry's got some linguistic problems. So crack shoot. Um I imagine the heavy one would be the, the one to use. He says shoe. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, he could do that. How far away? Can you punish that one from? Oh. Oh. Almost. No, he, of course he's gonna block it. It's a little fine. Um. Wonder if that would be good for. <sighs> Wonder if that would be good for anti air. So here's how we can check. The other way around here. I'm gonna do Terry on Terry. Oh, good Terry stage, right? Terry, 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 Terry. All the Terry. Okay, so what I can do here is I can set the training dummy. I have s super secret settings here, right? So. Push block and training, and we'll set it to the kick. And we'll set his kick to crack shoot. And then we just try different stuff. Uh, so let's set him to all guard and no wake up. And boom. There we go. Okay. So this is how you would test the effectiveness of different attacks. Oh, he didn't do it. Oh, he got, he got fucking hit. That's funny. He just gets beamed. I'm surprised that he doesn't, he doesn't actually do it from here. I don't know why. That's strange. Nah. Could do that. Could do that. Yeah, I mean, it could work in some situations here. There are some use cases for it. This doesn't seem quite as quite as interesting as having crack shoot. Um, so then the next question, of course, is if we make him do burn knuckle. How, how good is that? That's interesting. Uh, something's glitching there where he can't seem to do it when I do this one. I hear him say the word, but he doesn't actually do it. Or crack, yeah, sorry. Burn, crack shoot doesn't seem as interesting as power dunk. That's what I meant to say. Feels like you can bait this one. A bit much as much as it looks cool and it sounds really OP but it's not it's not really because it's so slow yeah in fact you can block it off a jab it's so slow you can block it off a jab that's funny it 
it's really risky. It's, it's a lot less uh, crazy than I thought it would be. Yeah. Well, I'm using light. That's the fastest one. I mean, we can make it, we can give him the heavy, but it's even slower. Um, now, that's not to say that we couldn't adjust it, make a special animation that works a little better, but it just kind of, just kind of trying to figure out at base face value here, what are we really looking at, you know? Like, that's even slower. You, wow, you can, you can, you're not going to punish anything with that. No, that's not going to work at all. Oh, that's right. You can't do it on block. Oh, <laughs> you could, you could do a power charge. Which power junk did I do? I did, I did heavy. Um, they're about the same startup, but the reason I chose heavy is because it actually reaches a little farther than light does. So yeah, let's do power dunk H. I think that would be the one to use anyway. Oh, uh, I have to set him to counter kick. Yeah, like this one's definitely the... You're not going to defend against it. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, it's not going to beat that. Nothing beats a uh, rising tackle, apparently. He doesn't, he doesn't follow through there. Oh, it doesn't quite reach for some of these, which is fine. That's fine. It shouldn't be too OP, I guess. It goes pretty far, though. Not going to do anything about that. Oh, wow. He's... Terry's head just kind of sticks out there, right? Set the off counter, counter rising tackle. I could do that. I, I would want to differentiate him from, um, from Ken and Ryu, though. <laughs> Don't do it with crack shoot. You'll just get beamed. Holy shit. That's funny. Oh, that's part of it. Part of the, the the balance of alpha counters is they're not universally just OP. You have to you have to know when to use them. Oh yeah, of course, that is Final Fight Three. I got a little mixed in there. This is a uh, Alpha Two Final Fight. Um, playlist going on. Let me turn it up because um, Alpha 3 is actually, or I'm sorry, uh, Final Fight 3 is actually pretty l low volume. Let's make sure I got it just a There we go. How about that? that? That soundtrack's really soft, so it doesn't doesn't come through as well. And same thing with Final Fight CD. The the recordings on those are really really soft. Oh! <laughs> Light power dunk beats him to the punch. Oh, that's funny. Holy shit, that's so funny. Mmm. <laughs> That's really funny. 
Ugh. Boom! <laughs> Get the fuck down. Have you heard of the Art of Fighting Super Nintendo soundtrack? Mr. Big Steam is a banger there. No, actually I haven't played very much of Art of Fighting. Um, just never really got exposed to it. I know that they like have like really huge sprites in the arcade and stuff and it looks really cool. I just never really tried it. Yeah, so there's very limited range here. If you use like round wave, he's not gonna he's not gonna get you. Yeah. Final Fight 3's got some interesting shit for music. It's got a lot of interesting concepts too. Hold on a second. Really? It's like a quick way to... I'm gonna try. Hold on. I, I think I figured out kind of like a quick little... Wow, yeah, you can do... Because... Here, let me turn on input view. Because rising tackles a charge from down to up. Um... And this is a half circle forward. You can. You can kind of like buffer in the. Uh... You can. Yeah, you can buffer in. Shoot. Hold on. Trying to get it to go now. Nope, not that. Yeah, you can you can do it with a lot of stuff. You just kind of buffer it in on the way up. So you do a half circle from down to forward to up, and then you can just buffer in your. That's actually kind of cool. And since uh, round wave gives you, it gives you a special cancel. You can just buffer it right in. Although it did it did an ex. Uh, that's cool. That's I, I'm sure that works in the official ones too. For the ones that allow it. Yeah, that it, it ended up being an EX though. You gotta be careful with that. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Just alpha counter with the armor move. <laughs> yeah. Um. Harry's EX. Uh, power charge if it hits it'll or if they try to hit you it'll armor let's see if I can yeah like that boom let's see. oh oh baby <laughs> oh shit okay hold on hold on we can make this happen Comes the big one. <laughs> All right, that's 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 pretty satisfying. I have to say. Oh, oh, let's go. <laughs> I wish you didn't pull out that alpha counter, huh? <laughs> yeah. So the the ex version of of power charge has armor. That's the only one, though. It, it's designed to get you out of the corner kind of thing. So that you can escape. That's basically what its, what its power is. If you use it, of course, um... If you use it near the corner, as, as the aggressor, then you can do the wall bounce. But if you're in the corner, it, the idea is that it's supposed to get you out of the corner. Yeah, Buster Wolf's one of the coolest supers. Yeah, he don't want he don't want to fuck with that. Um. Oh. 
Whoa, let's go! <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, let's see, what will he do here? Uh, yeah, he can get through. Whoa. It's funny because Power Geyser, or no, sorry, um, Buster Wolf was actually going to be a double running Power Geyser, so he would run up with a, with his hand and then come down and then do a Power Geyser from like far away. That was what they were originally planning. From like this distance, he would like, with the Power Geyser, he would run with it and, and hit you and then you do two in a row. But then it ended up morphing into Buster Wolf eventually, which I think is a, a much better idea, of course. What about Alpha Countering the Alpha Counter? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, if you can... Yeah, absolutely. Let me see if I, I gotta get the right one here. I keep doing the... Well, <laughs> maybe in some situations. Why is mine different? Oh, uh, because I can I can do either of them. Remember, there's two of them. Let me um turn guard off here. Oop. There. Oh, uh, what's his wake up move? He's not gonna do it. Oh, he's not gonna do it because he's he's told to um he's told to push black instead. Um. Turn that off. So I have the ability to do other ones because that's what I'm programmed with. The more I think about it, the uh, the burn knuckle one's not all that great. Like it's sort of cool, but I don't know. Very limited application. It's 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 truly the uh, the power dunk that's the MVP here. Got an alpha counter with Buster Wolf. <laughs> Not quite. And of course, you still have the push block. I mean, you can catch people with with the power max activation. Be like, oh, they're doing something. Well, I caught you. You know how you can in Street Fighter Five. Say so like, oh, caught him. You know, he was doing something. Well, you can certainly do that. You can use Power Max to save your ass from certain death, too. Like, if they blocked it and you're like, oh shit, that, that shit's vulnerable, you can... Right, hold on. Let me just show it. Then you can just back off. It works kind of like an FADC there. Oh, and then you caught him. <laughs> Sometimes you catch him. Sometimes you catch him. Yeah, I, I really like the power dunk. Like, it gives a huge advantage. Holy crap. And considering that Terry's power max buff is really just getting this move. Um... I think it makes a lot of sense to have that. Like a really strong defensive one for Terry. To really turn the tides. Oh. Damn it. Damn it. You could have alpha counter power wave, I just don't think it'd be very useful. 
In fact, it'd probably be detrimental to you. Just based on the frame data of that move. Ooh, hold on. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. Ooh, let's go! Yeah, if you're really close, then Power Dunk is absolutely the better option overall. Um, The problem with having both Power Dunk and um, Crack Shoot, look at the input read. That's Power Dunk, that's Crack Shoot. They're both kick buttons. So theoretically, you wouldn't want both of them. The one's supposed to be a punch button, and one's supposed to be a kick button. And you could just do it. But it is something to consider, at least for internal consistency. corner you're just ah oh, fuck me <laughs> it's like get back in oh I should have should have power max there oh oh <laughs> it's so cool No, it's not it's not on the arms. Actually the first hit's the knee. The first hit of the power dunk is knee. I think that's why it's a kick move. Because he's jumping with a jumping kick. Or jumping knee first, and then he dunks down. It kinda comes off, yeah, it kinda comes off as a as a punch move, but it's not. Yeah, well, a power, power charge leads into a, a known combo. So the only way that that I would allow power charge to be one of them would be as if it, it didn't let you follow up. Which is fine, I guess, but you kind of get the same effect. Uh, because look how far they, fall, they fly. Uh, between these two moves, it's actually more advantageous to have the... The burn knuckle because you're you stay on top of them you travel with them oh yeah oh yeah 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 power charge is a kick um i think part of it is just that they're running out of <laughs> they've run out of buttons so yeah you, you could also say the same thing here um with rising tackle it's it's hitting with the with the kicks there's no punches here but it's a punch move You, you, I guess you could say that he's spinning with his, with his arm, and that does damage too. But um, you, you do hit them with the legs too. It's a little weird. See? Oh, yeah, sorry. He glitches out sometimes. Which is special? Use punch, power wave, burn knuckle, 
Um, this is a punch move. It's a command normal. Not very useful though. Okay, I guess it'll get get him off of you. Create some distance. Where this doesn't create distance, it just creates an opportunity. Power wave one will I already know it's not gonna work right. Because the frame data is really fucked on it. It's not it's not a good move for that because there's so little advantage that you're already on the defensive again whenever you use it. If you use it point blank, you're gonna have to block the next attack. Like, it's it's really bad advantage. Even at a distance, it's like, it doesn't give you much. But the way it's used in this toolkit, it's just set up differently. Yeah, even the heavy one. I don't know, the heavy one might be okay. I don't know. I see what you're saying though, where this is the close. Oh, sorry. This one's the close range. And then this would be the long range. This feels kind of weird to have a projectile as an alpha counter. A very weird kind of thing. Don't really... It seems kind of strange, to me at least. Actually, kind of leaning toward this at this point, because it pushes them back far away and it creates some distance again. Just don't let you. Um, just don't. Don't let the. Um, don't let it cancel. And it should be fine. Let's try that, just to see. I'm kind of curious here. Uh, let's give it to CPU Terry. So. The idea here is back fist for punch and dunk H4. Oh, and we'll set his training settings again. We'll do the back fist first. Uh, I'll go. Oh. Mm. You could bait it. It's not good for checks out in the middle of nowhere. Now, it looks like that's pretty. That's pretty good. That man, that that'll beat the shit out of it though. It's a little slow to be hitting projectiles. Hmm. Oh, it doesn't hit crouchers either. Forgot about that. Goes over crouchers' heads. Hmm. Like I tried to do something. Yeah, that one may not be too good. Nope. <laughs> Rising tackle just is just too good. <laughs> How odd, you're saying Terry doesn't have enough specials? <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This one, this one didn't end up being as good as I thought it would be. It's just too slow. Oh, Jesus. It, 
Well, not that. They just it just can't beat lights at all. Um, we'd have to animate it in a in a way that that it could hit those. It w we would have to take out some of the startup frames. But yeah, I don't know. That's too close. Yeah, he'd hit that. Well, it actually... Did it hit him before it landed, or is it because he was in his glitch state? Might have been because it was in glitch state that he, he hit like an air hit. I don't know. Just not as good as I thought it would be. It could be a different move, sure. Yeah. Yeah, we could absolutely make it a different move. It doesn't have to be. Now this you shouldn't normally be able to do. I gotta fix that. Um, so I'm gonna make it so that if if one of the characters pops a max mode, then the other one cannot. And in this case, they're they're both doing it. Um, because you could you could do this too, and that's not gonna work. Hey, the blue. Bun bun, followed on game jolt. Thank you. Trying to keep my eye on the follows here. Oh shit, you can counter it too, I forgot. That's cool. The other thing I want to add is that while you're in while you're in um, armor max mode, that you could do another push, another alpha counter or push block, and expend the rest of your meter. So I'm thinking at this point, and I'll try it. If it's too OP, of course it can be changed. If you enter armor max on its own, you have double the time to do something. So here's a good example. Look at he cancelled into his, look how fast it's going down. And mine was done raw. So if I do and then cause him to do his, you see I've got double the time that he does for his. So I'm thinking if you do if you're in armor max and you and you want to do another alpha counter, that it would take up half of the bar. It would deduct half the bar from your remaining time. And then, so you could, or maybe a little less than half, so that the idea is that you could do three alpha counters if you do them quick enough. Um, or, I'm sorry, two. Two alpha counters. So you could do one right away, and it would knock your bar down to, like, here, and then you do another one, and that ends your, your armor max. So you could enter wood one, and then you have one more to use before time runs out because you have half time when you when you go from not being in max mode to using one. And that says armor max cancel. So I think that's where I want to take this particular thing. Is there a Terry move that wasn't adapted? Oh boy, is there! <laughs> Oh boy, is there a bunch of moves that Terry has that have not been adapted. <laughs> um, yeah, that's not a punch. Or that is a punch, rather. Um, hmm, that is a punch. Yes, actually. <sighs> actually, there is. What? Let, let me, um... It would, actually, it would actually work, too. I think it would work. Well, it'd be close range only, though. Would be close range only, so if you want that dichotomy. Now he doesn't have to have one that necessarily hits really far away. But um he does have a close range. So if we go to a limited match. Uh-oh. I have to stall something. Excuse me. <laughs> Was it installing an update? What's going on? Is it going? Is it working? 
Installing Microsoft's uh, Visual C redistributable package, step 101. I guess we're waiting a minute. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's going? Is it going? Things are flickering. Is it going? Maybe? Maybe step two or two. We're getting there. Oh, thing went away. What do we got? Okay. And we'll kill. We want to hear the final fight. Well, let's do that. Okay, so, yes, uh, especially in KOF 2002, um, Harry does have... I probably picked a crappy color. That's eh, alright. Uh, he does have this move. Very close range, though. But this one didn't... I think it's... Was it real ballot that started this one? Or is it... Oh, no, it's Fatal Fury 3, I think he had it. Um, it's pretty cool. It's the only KOF game I think that he had it in. to think if he had anything else uh his forward white punch is this in 2002 kind of a jumbled animation isn't it we used his 98 forward a uh, he's got that at rising tackle I suppose the other weakness here, um, he doesn't really have an anti-air kind of thing, but, but Power Dunk's kind of an anti-air um, in a lot of games. So for Pocket Fighter EX, I think the Power Dunk covers the close range. Um, no, uh, yeah. Let me make him do it. Yeah, you land really quick, so... Oh, no! He got me there. A max height neutral heavy kick. Can absolutely get it. Yeah, even that. Let's see. Oh no, I, I think I wasn't holding back all the way. Yeah, he wouldn't be able to get that. Um, Terry doesn't have any air specials, believe it or not. He's like never had air specials for some reason. Very grounded fighter. Yeah, so we... Mm, sort of works <laughs> as an anti-air. Oh shit. Maybe I wasn't holding? Oh shit, maybe I wasn't holding back all the way. Sometimes I do that with the analog. I'm not holding back. Oh no, I was definitely holding it there. It just, at the very height of it, he can still get you. So overall, it doesn't look like they work too well that way, but we can always change the animation and the frame data. To make it more effective for that kind of thing. Because it looked like an alpha that Ryu was able to get that sure you can off on him pretty good. What do we get for random? Oh, oh yeah. From Gal Fighters. The anchor what? I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong, but... Uh, okay, so... Uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna have him attack me.
He's not gonna jump and attack though, right? Okay, let me, let me make the other character Ryu. Yeah, we'll do Ryu and Ryu. Oh, we didn't go to this one yet. So we'll make him punch, right? Oh yeah, jeez, he gets you. Uh, Cause it's so fast. So that that absolutely works as an anti-air because it's so fast. Unless you do a light hit. If your hits are light, they won't be able to get it. So that. Makes me wonder. Oh, oh. <laughs> I crossed them up. I'm going the wrong way. Nah, he lands too quick. It's hard to. Oh, I crossed him up, so I was holding the wrong direction. Let's see. No, too quick. I think the sure you can's are four frame startup. We can check. So pay attention to this number here. Once he starts doing a show, you can. That's basically his animation counter. So one, two, three, four. Yep, that's a four. Four frame startup. So it looks like if they hit it at the height. You basically have to have a four frame move or quicker to catch it. Otherwise they're gonna they're gonna fall through. So that means probably what it should be is three frames. So it should keep the the time stop for one frame, or the animation just gets cut for a frame. Would probably be the way to go. It's just the same animation, it just happens to have a frame cut out. It would be easier to program a time stop that's a little different, although that would break the time inconsistency on punishing and stuff perhaps. Even if it's only a couple frames off, it might still be a hassle. Which leaves you really only with the animation route to change the animation in a way that does that. Or just add additional time stop frames consistently across the board. So say that it are, are five time stop frames. <clears throat> or whatever it is, or three, or whatever it is, to any animation that comes next. So the time stop is always the same, but maybe you'll delay the the animation from playing a frame or two to get that right balance of, of how active it is. I mean, it's really hard to beat a four frame startup alpha counter on the ground, though. Like, I, don't, I don't think, I don't think it's possible to not get hit by it. <laughs> yeah, like, it's really... It's, it's pretty good. It's really only the... Really only the jumping here that, that gets, uh... messed up. And I really wonder what Alpha's secret is. I'd have to probably record it and see what the when the time stop comes back uh, when it's over <laughs> I 
<laughs> he still got me. Yeah, because... Oh my god. Yeah, no, I, I guess it depends on the timing, but... Depends on the timing, because there, there's a three-frame delay after... Or three-frame recovery on activations. It's like eight frames on... On um, armor max, but you can actually... You can actually um, block out of the recovery on an armor mass activation. No, he won't do it here. How did you do the animations? Uh, well, Unity has an animation editor in it, essentially. So it gives the timeline down here. So if we do show you, oh. you know what? The overhead punch is fine. So here you just do the attributes that you want along the timeline. So these are like counter hit and the flinch box. These are the hit box IDs. And here's the, the body position, like the position of the sprite and the sprite itself. And you see it ticks through. It's actually easier to see if you look at it like this. Oh, 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 oh. So you can see the sprites here along the timeline as he moves. And that animation is pretty simple. But you can get really elaborate with it. Um, so, sure you can do the heavy. Or actually, no land is the current one we're using. So in this case, and I'll move him to the side here. In this case, it actually moves. So that's what these are for. You can move the X, Y, Z position along with the move itself. And then this is the first half of the move. Uh, it, it programmatically pulls him back down to the to the ground. And that's actually why Terry is a little glitched. He doesn't have that programmatic gravity at the end of his moves. They're actually animated to go back down, but they don't sometimes reach the bottom. <laughs> and that's why he gets stuck in like that half air state that he hasn't quite landed properly. So I'm still still redoing that part of it. That's pretty much it. Unity's animation tools are really powerful. And here's his sliding elbow so I can control how he moves like the curve of the motion like this is gradiated that uh, he's a little faster at start and then he slows down as he gets closer to this point that's where a lot of the smooth movements come from I'm sure you can the same way Fact, these are actually terrible here. Or, no, these are right. These are right. These are these are good curves, actually. They they looked wrong because I, I thought they were the y-axis. Um, see how he slides in really quick at first, and then he skids to a halt, hits, and then he goes up really fast, and then he kind of slows down as he gets there. That's how these curves work. And the, the upward momentum is, is similar. It stalls as he gets to the apex. And then when he gets here, gravity takes over by this event and it pulls him back down. Did I have to create the... It, wait, do you, did you have to create individual sprites for the different states when the user moves? Not sure I understand the question. The download? How's the download? What do you mean the download? Chat, listen. <laughs> Be very specific about what you're asking. <laughs> the stream? What about the stream? 
The download on the stream. What does that even mean? Uh, I use a sprite for for sprites right now. Uh, now most of these sprites come from the official Neo Geo Pocket game, but we have done a couple of our own tweaks and animations. So here, Kaku Fubatsu was never in that game. Uh, Pocket ended up taking that one, and so he animated the poses. They're really good too. Thought you were downloading a game to check. No, we already checked it. It was King of Fighters. It, it was installing other stuff. You go, my dude. Hey, what's up? No, I have not decided on a move. It's going to take a lot of thought, I think, to really think of the right one. Oh yeah, he didn't have a grab with, so we had to draw that. So there's some stuff we've added. Um, we really didn't get much animated here. Um, I animated some Chun-Li stuff in A Sprite, though. A whole bunch of it. Um, oh, these are gifts? Oh, here's the A Sprite files. So like I did these, because she doesn't have these sprites in the Neo Geo Pocket games. They based her off of Alpha, and when I put Chun Li in, I want Chun Li to be more like Third Strike. So I had to go and animate some of her Third Strike moves. Yes, if Geef were to be added, and that's an if, I haven't decided on that yet. Um, yeah, he would have Green Hand. No, no, no doubt about it. I don't know why Capcom doesn't want to give Geef his green hand. It's it's quite annoying. But yeah, absolutely would give it to him. Here's her neutral heavy air kick. How can you not have Geef? Capcom's got a lot of good grapple characters. There's actually quite a few to choose from. I don't, I don't think it's fair to say that you're locked into having to use Geef. Here's a back twirl. Most of these frames actually already existed. I think I only did minor. I think I may have edited that one. But most of these frames are already in existence for her. Looks good though. Nice back dash twirl. <laughs> you think he's a bad guy, eh? <laughs> no. I just, I think personally, um, I think Alex is more interesting than Geef as a as a character. So the possibility that it, maybe we'd add Alex instead. Although Geef does have, I, I, man, I'm real proud of this one. I'm proud of this, and this is her Street Fighter Four back grab. So in the Neo Geo Pocket games, and I think even in Third Strike, her grab animation is the same forward and back. And I'm like, shit, I don't want that. I want. I want that Street Fighter 4 back grab is really cool. So I animated that one. Some of the frames are reused, of course, but um Like I'm proud of that frame. I'm proud of that frame. I made that one. <laughs> yeah, I haven't I'm I'm keeping myself from deciding. Uh I think these all these frames are just there. I think I just animated it to see how it looked. I think all these frames had already existed. Yeah, there's nothing new there. Um, oh, I enhanced this one though. Yeah, I enhanced this one. It did not look quite like that in the pocket games. So I'm keeping myself from, from making any real promises on, on characters other than the first eight. So the first eight, Ryu, Ken, Chun-Li, Guile, Kyo, Iori, Terry, and Mai. Those are the ones that are set in stone. And then, yeah, other than Dan. <laughs> other than that, um, it's all kind of up in the air. And I think part of that's because we'll have to see how the game plays. And then I'll make a determination, you know, based on gameplay, we need more charge characters or we need some grapple characters. Which ones would translate best to how the game is now and, and things like that. 
Yeah, exactly. I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Is that all the animations here? Back heavy kick, dash. Oh, back fierce. Oh, I did this one. Uh, the pocket games actually had an animation for this, but I didn't like it. So I, I did it over again. Oh, stop. Yeah. Yeah, I think I did all the frames here. Except for the idol. Yeah, well, I'm proud of that one too. I think that one's good. I mean, might be a little off here. Oh no, okay. This is the snap two frame and then she comes back. Okay, no, that's fine. That means alright. <laughs> yeah. A, 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 A. <laughs> I can't unhear it. I know, I know all of you out there, you played Third Strike, you, you're hearing this animation right now. <laughs> Gotta build that meter. Yeah, yeah, oh, that move, exactly. <laughs> uh, in this game, this one wouldn't build meter. The normals don't build meter, the specials do, if you whiff them, but I think getting getting meter on blocked or clean hits is fine for normals but if you do give meter on whiff in a game like street fighter you're just going to end up with with that phenomenon where the players are just going to back away and start spamming the the most efficient attack to build that meter and to discourage that behavior i just removed it so that whiffing normals doesn't give you any meter And it just kind of turns into a weird spectacle to see that. And it's probably not what the designers intended for Third Strike, but they never made Fourth Strike or whatever the hell you would call it. So, we don't know. Just with specials. You can. A good, a good strategy is when you dizzy an opponent, do a couple specials to build some meter. Like a couple light shoryus. Two light shoryus. Because they can't get hit. Um when they're dizzied, like in Street Fighter V. In Third Strike, you can hit them when they're dizzy. But even when they, when they eventually, the combo ends and you can no longer hit them, just do a couple show shoryus because it won't knock them out of dizzy because they're invulnerable for that period of time. And that builds up some more meter and then you do your big, big jump in combo. Um, so you might see the pro players do that a lot, especially in five. That, that's absolutely something you should do. But otherwise, if you're all the way across the screen, you can maybe get away with Jumafina Shoryu, but uh, otherwise it's probably not too bit, too good of an idea to just do it out in the middle of nowhere and you might get punished. And so crack shoe, crack shoe, crack shoe. <laughs> now, we'll see that one moves you close to the opponent. Uh, so that's, that's a bad one to whiff out in the middle of nowhere. That would be a very bad one. What's this one? Oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah, here's another one. Graphicus did the the leg work on this animation. It's their standing heavy kick from Third Strike. I'd like to add that one in. And then also the forward heavy kick version where she moves a little bit forward would be good. That one came out good. Hey, on Game Jolt we got Ben94Z. Thank you. Oh, and and here on Twitch we've got Cable Shaft. Thanks for the follow. We're doing pretty good today. Got a lively chat. Everything's going good. Until my computer blows up like it was earlier. Didn't do much on Guile yet. Oh, Yori. Ooh, we got um. Oh, you know what? I gotta look for gifts. I gotta look for all formats. We added, um, he never had this in the pocket games. I was really surprised. His, uh, extender off of his, what, seven maidens is it called? His maiden super can cancel into this in some games. 
So Pocket animated that. God, it's beautiful. Um, if you don't know, let me... Oh, bumping the mic around here. There's our boy. Is it back? No. Uh, is it forward? I think it's forward. Yeah. So, okay, it's Maiden Masher. Is the first part of the super. Um, what the hell is this? Oh, it's down forward. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, I did down back, so that's why it didn't work. So, Wolf Bloom. It's called Wolf Bloom. Oh, I didn't get it right. It's a little hard with a uh, little hard with controller. Really? <laughs> well, apparently, I can't do it. It was LP and SP simultaneously. Okay, smash it out. Really? Did I did I stop too far? Early? Try it again. I'll need the stick for this. I don't think I can do this on pad. <laughs> it's not. It's not working. Oh my god! Really? You can usually just mash the hell out of it. I can't do this on pad. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I can't do it on pad. Jesus Christ. Let's see. And then flame combo or flame combo. -er. That's wine cups? No, that's this. We thought maybe making that into an EX move. And there's that's the, the max version of Seven Maidens, but you can't get anything after that. It's only the normal one you can get. I can't I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it! It's four down forwards and both. I can't do it on, on pad. I'm not, where's, I don't even know where the stick is. Oh, it's over there. Hold on. Let me grab it. Let me grab it. No, I'm getting mad at this one. Let me grab it. across the room oh no well that that sound means we're almost time up so let's check this out and then that'll be it and we'll sign off All right. um well not so much a command grab because he's got a jump so if we make let's see if this Picks up. Does it pick up? Come on. No? Come on. Give me control. Did it work? I don't know. Did I break the connector? Oh, there we go. Uh, oh, I don't have buttons. Hold on. I think my buttons are messed up. Okay. Yeah, buttons are messed up. Um Okay, I should be able to do it. I've got I've got this one at least. Oh, I still can't do it. Is that right? It's down forward, down forward. Oh, oh I I do I need to do hold on. I have to do light punch and heavy punch, but I don't have a light punch right now. So let me try this. Okay, got it back. I still can't do it! <laughs> I still can't do it! Oh my god. I switched to square, square gate recently, so I definitely don't know if it'll work. Oh my god, really? I can't, apparently I'm, I can't do it. Screw me. Oh, there we go. But it, it was too late, it missed. Interesting. Let's do it in the corner. Oh my god, I can't believe I can't do this anymore. Nope. Just didn't even didn't even go. 
I'm sure I'm just missing the input somewhere. Do we have, do we have input read? Where's input read? Show inputs. Watch my mashing skills. <laughs> Come on, get me! Oh, there we go. There it goes. What was I doing wrong? Let's look at my inputs. That might be part of the problem. I'm going from down to left. To down. Sometimes I'm missing the diagonal. Somehow. Yeah, sometimes I'm missing the diagonal here. I think that's what's screwing it up. Oh, how do I do the backgrounds? Um, no, they're in, they're in 2D. So let me, they've got some scrolling, so they might look a little bit 3D-ish in some spots, but they're actually 2D. It's all 2D sprites. They're just, I can show you this way. It'd probably be the easier way to see it. I actually just slide with the camera. Oh, he's not walking. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, because he set the alpha counter, right? <laughs> you could animate the clouds. Uh, let me let me get him stop doing that. Oh, he's guarding. That feels much better. More at home. Jeez, I haven't used a stick in so long because it hurts. Where I hurt my arms. It's hard to play games with a traditional controller. Uh, it's a little easier with the stick, but like an actual gamepad is really bad for continued play. Uh, same thing. We use a sprite for the backgrounds. Um, I pretty much use a sprite for any, everything. I can't say that everybody uses it, but I use it. I think Graphicus uses it. I don't know if Raito uses it. There's a few alternatives out there. Um, ooh, secret. We're not opening that. Nobody gets to know that. There's a secret character coming. Um, yeah, let's go up, go to stages. So this is our stage template. Let me pull up, say, not all these are finished. This is a good one. This is one that I'm, I'm working on, but it's not finished yet. But all the layers here are... You can see they're all in different layers, and then I'll import them into the game. But it's all the same, all the same stuff, kind of thing. I guess the uh, the house. Oh, that's the one on the right, and the pole and the truck. Some of these all merge into one layer because they don't need to be separate elements when I export it. But a lot of it's separated so that you can have the like the far back can move in the background so I'm still planning and working on this one this is from an adaptation I didn't draw it from scratch but this is an adaptation from KOFR2 I don't know if I added these lines or not or if they were already in there I remember doing something with the lines maybe I extended them down is what I did Colors need work. Yeah, the KOF R2. Um, <clears throat> the KOF R2 stages are really washed out for some reason. So like the 
the contrast between these two shades and this is too high. Like that, that'll have to be reworked. Which means this shade will probably darken a little, and this might darken a little bit. But this is the one that's really the offender here. Um, is this in... it's not index. Make it index. Oh! That was not good. <laughs> Undo. Here, let's grab the colors first. Then index. So we would want to edit... Now this is just quick and dirty, but we would want to edit this and bring this down. Um, maybe bring it a little more to the pink spectrum. And bring it... Yeah, and then bring it up a little bit. And then this here, the white. This is just really quick and dirty. But then this white, you would want to increase the saturation. Maybe bring down the, uh, bring down the brightness a little bit. And then uh, you would choose a sort of color temperature here. I think this one works pretty good. You know, you do something like that, and then now it looks a little bit better. But there's a lot of tweaking to be done. What's playing? Um, on the screen, you see the, the Winamp tab. It'll tell you the music that's playing. So, that's a it's curves theme. Right? No! Oh no, it's broken! I'm sorry! It's broken! I told you bad info. It broke. Okay, hold on, hold on, I fix it. <laughs> yep, yeah, it broke. Damn. Um, and that's yeah, because I had to reboot. I forgot to turn it back on. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. There we go. Soccer is staked. I'm looking, I'm like, under heaven's destruction. I'm like, that ain't that trick. Oh, that's uh, that's Blaze Boy. We did that last week. <laughs> yeah, it's Sakura's theme. This is uh, Dan's ending. But yeah, there's a lot of color tweaks you can do. Um, I would probably make this last shade darker, perhaps. It's kind of hard to tell because it's a background too, so I don't know. Just kind of wing it. But this this shade actually worked pretty good with with this here. Oh, let me adjust this one first. Let me knock the darkness up on that one. Ground that a little more. Um, this needs a saturation decrease. Also, it just doesn't jive with that, so maybe lighter? Yeah, a little lighter. And then you see how this snowballs, because now this is going to need uh, a change. And now this needs to change. So you see how that all works. Let's see. That hue is there, that hue is there. We move this hue this way. Now they, now these two colors are a little more harmonious. I think this one should be, not darker, but less saturated. Kind of dull it a little bit. Sort of match the level that the dark red is at. But that's, yeah, that's kind of how you go about this stuff. This one's hard. Because they're using green here. It really makes me want to make this darker. But I don't know if that's the right call yet. And then the green actually would have to be lighter? No. It would have to be darker yet. It'd be really dark. That's hard. I don't... Hmm. I don't know about that. Maybe a different hue might help. Oh, oh that works. That works. Bring it a little more into the teal range. Yeah, and then this one, um, yeah, slightly more into the teal range, slightly less saturation, a little more brightness, and there. That's not bad. Oh, now you got me off on color in here, Tim. <laughs> I could be doing this all night now. Oh, this green is shared with this green, though, too, huh? It's not terrible, but... The mountains in the back could probably change. 
assuming they're not shared with anything else here. Let's see. Yeah, they're on their own. Okay. So I would. Hmm, what would I do here? I don't think the hue itself needed to change. What did I do? I screwed it all up here. Oh, okay. Then redo. Okay. Now we're looking at the mountains. The mountains could lose a little bit of saturation, maybe, to help distance them. You can make them look a little more misty, you know what I mean? Like they're far off. More like misty mountains. There. That's pretty good. This one's tough here. They're using this from here, is it? Is that the same one? Let's see what happens. Oh, oh, no, no, that's, it's this color. Okay. Now let's undo that. Um, okay, no, I, I went too far back. There. I guess I'll save this <laughs> now that we're doing it. I, I might change these colors still even more. I mean, these are just a preliminary kind of check. Um, but I haven't checked them with like the other palettes from the other stages to see how how they are. Uh, poor, poor little loaf of bread. What a name. Hello, welcome. How you doing? But yeah, that's... That's what I would start to do. This would be the start of the process of figuring out what to do with these things. Like, this color here is a little... A little white. Where'd this color come from? Who shares with this one? Oh, that's a mountain color. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you can't go too, too dark there. Because then you'll have to start... I'd probably change... I'd split these colors. And I'd make the mountains a different color. So that I could change the buildings without having to worry about it. But yeah, here's another one where... Um, yeah, you don't want to go too saturated with this. It's supposed to look near white for the mountain face here, but it kind of screws up, it kind of screws up the background there. So let's see, let's go back. How far back does it go? Okay, there we go. Uh, there we go. I am doing dandy. And see now we have another conflict here where this color here is too close to this color here because this color here I think is shared with this. This is ID 7. And is it? I on. ID 6. Yeah, it's 6. So if you change one, you change the other. And yeah, you see where the problem starts to come into play here. You do kind of have a battle between this green and this. Anytime you darken this, then the green's gonna need to be a little darker. Yeah, it gets hairy. <laughs> the palettes are, palettes are a mess. And then this bridge is way too desaturated. But it's because it's part of this one. So we have to then edit the bridge so it's not using the same red as this one. Yeah, you get the idea. It's it's. It gets a little hairy, <laughs> put it that way. So what I would do here for layering, uh, cause I've been thinking about it here, that as far back has the mountains, the floor mountains and the back mountains, I think we'd have to split those. We'd have to use take the far mountains and make them their own layer. So that scrolls at a different speed. That'll scroll, that's a layer, this is a layer, this is a layer. And then you've got the boats are kind of their own layer, and then you have the ground as a layer. Because the boats will just be going up and down, they'll be animated. Hmm. Yeah, the colors are pretty solid on this. It's gonna come down to editing the town. And some of these buildings might have to be just changed, so they use different color values. 
I really think splitting the buildings away from the mountains is going to be something that needs to be done. Because otherwise you're just going to keep clashing back and forth between the greens, the purples, and the, and the reds. And it's just going to be an endless nightmare. Like, like you already see what it did to the bridge. Fixing this screwed the bridge up. The bridge is not terrible, but it looks really washed out. You know what I mean? I'll probably pump up the saturation on a lot of these in the end. It's tough. It, it takes a lot of work, a lot of tweaking, a lot of thinking. But, hey, it is what it is, right? So. Alright, we'll have to close her out. As I am getting my arm pain. So I'm hitting my limit here. So any questions before I go, I will try to answer. Uh, throughout the week, I think I'm going to experiment a little more with... Yeah, there we go. Ah, not fast enough. There we go. Ah. I haven't used a stick in so long, this is awful. Uh, anyway, but yeah, my arms are starting to get beat up, so we'll be closing up in a minute here. You can get the game on Game Jolt, for those of you here and don't know. Uh, so this is a Game Jolt desktop client. You can look on GameJolt.com and you just search Pocket Fighter EX, it'll come up. There's me! <laughs> and it's got updates and stuff. So this is an older public build, but we're working our way up to GGPO netcode, and it's just taken a long time. Oh, damn, 12 months ago. 12 months ago. Really? Did I release this in September? Of last year? Oh, no, October. October 9th, 2019. Shit, we're close. It's almost been a whole year. Man, it's been a hell of a year. Shitty year, I mean. Yeah, it's, it's almost here. Oh, screwed up. Oh, I screwed it. Do you remember the 21st night of September? That's, that's today. <laughs> Now when he got dizzied, I should have went like this to build some meter. I would have had enough for an itch. Sure were you at the end of that. Or I could have done this. Have you ever been in collaborate in a collaboration? What do you mean by that? I mean we got multiple people helping with graphics and music and that kind of stuff. So that's a collaboration, if that's what you mean. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Ah, uh, no, that, that wouldn't work without a... Yeah, I get a lot of help with the, especially with the sprites and the music. Like, I can animate some stuff, but it's not, um, I'm not the best and I don't have all the time. I do all the programming, so I don't have time to do everything else. So I get a lot of help with that. Here's where you do this, and then you can do your combo. <laughs> That's the pro strat. Anyway, so yeah, we'll wind down now. I'm hurting, so I'm gonna have to go take a rest.
Turn the Xbox controller back on. That's what I usually use to test with the 360 controller. Not because I like using pad, it's just... I don't have to keep the big bulky arcade stick in my lap when I'm typing and stuff, so it helps. So. Alright, so... It is the 21st today, so we'll be back Monday... The 28th, the last day of September. Holy crap, it is gone. And then apparently the 9th of October is when I released the last demo. We're not getting an update on that day. I got way too much stuff broken to get a new public build out. But we do put the development builds up on Patreon. So I have a Patreon that's patreon.com slash gamedevscrubs. And um, so we got code samples up there. All the projects that I am leader on if they're far enough along i put up builds development builds there so you can check out the brand new stuff uh probably be either tomorrow or the next day i'll upload the um will i do it yeah i'll upload the alpha counter build then you can check that out <laughs> I still like the fact that you get both of them. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I'll upload the off-counter build and then you can mess around with that. Uh, still not sure what I'll do for Terry, but I work on this throughout the week. I only just stream it on Monday. So other streams. Tomorrow we've got uh, Amber will be doing... Shit. Amber, you up? Oh, she's sleeping. <laughs> I, th I think she's doing Resident Evil 2 remake. She's finishing that. That'll be at tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then the 23rd, we've got off. Thursday is my day for a solo game. We'll be playing Mighty Gunvolt Burst because Tim requested it. And uh, we'll see how that goes now that I screwed up my Joy-Cons trying to put a shell on them. We'll see if I can actually play that game. Uh, if not, we'll, we'll figure something out until they get repaired and then on Sunday Amber and I will be playing Silent Hill 3 finishing that up self-sabotage dude I did not destroy an $80 pair of Joy-Cons just to not play that game <laughs> absolutely would not take that plunge I'm, I'm really mad about that but I think I might have a workaround and I'm gonna play around with that this week to see how well it works so, yeah, I'll see you guys back on Thursday and Sunday and then next Monday. Or, yeah, this Sunday and this Monday. So, thanks everybody for hanging out. We've got, um... Got... Oh, was my thing broke? My thing broke. What happened? Refresh. Hold on. Oh, it broke. It broke, broke. What happened? Did it super die on me? Uh oh. Oh yeah, it broke, broke. I got... I got a little thing that helps me try to change the stuff here. Alright, whatever. I'll do it manually. Hit the sign off. <laughs> I had had my little touch portal all set up with all the stuff and... I know, maybe it's... Oh, you know what? It's set to the wrong one. That's why. Oh, I see why. I see why. Yeah, it's, it's set to the wrong panel. Alright. Well, whatever. I'll fix that later. Um... So... I've got uh, patrons on the Patreon, speaking of that. So I got some names to read out. I got Zombie Killer, Miguel A. Tabasco, Charles E. Baldwin, Danny Caballero, Awakened Emperor, Angel, Rui Luis, Uncle Roy, Mike Cruz, Taryn Williams, Corporal Chungus, Bryce Nagalingham, AJ Ben K, D Money 107, and LD Walker. Thank you guys very, very much. You help keep things going and so, I've already told you about that, what's up there, and that's pretty much it. I'm at Twitter, MarkDWiz, Discord, if chatbot hasn't died, it'll tell you. Hey, ScrubBot's alive! Holy crap! He usually doesn't make it the whole time. He's getting he's getting old and need a repair. There you go, there's Discord if you want to yell at me throughout the week. And that's pretty much it, so I gotta go rest. I'm hurting. Uh, thanks very much everybody for hanging out, and I'll see you later. Scrub out! <laughs>